There is nothing, absolutely nothing, standing in the way of Tesla going to $300 a share. There is no fundamental reason, no technical reason, no stock market sentiment reason, no looming negative news on the economy or on Tesla. Could any of that or all of that change tomorrow? Sure it could. But for today, it's all sunshine and blue skies. Hi, this is Randy Kirk. Say, tomorrow's regular show in the AM. You don't want to miss that. Then we've got Brian White around noon. And then in, in the afternoon will be the first time we have the new show. I think we're, we at least for now, we're probably going to call it Good News Monday and then Good News Tuesday, et cetera. I don't know. Maybe we'll change that. But for now, that's what it will be. And Larry Goldberg will be joining me as a regular co-host on Monday nights. I'm still trying to figure out who will be the co-hosts on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And then Larry, of course, is back for Good News Friday, as he has been for a while now. Um, as noted yesterday, we will definitely be including Grok or Grok um, in our daily coverage on this channel. We I'm not sure which pronunciation yet. <laughs> a lot of smart people are pronouncing it both ways. Elon says it's Grok. I don't know. Anyway, it'll be very interesting to hear what Brian and Larry's take are on Grok tomorrow. I suspect I probably also need to get Brian Wong involved and maybe John Gibbs to help us understand this fully. So, you know, hit subscribe and like and notify so that you're notified about all those things coming up. And of course, join Patreon so that you get the breaking news as it happens all day long. And then, uh, you know, buy a Cybertruck uh, bottle opener. Sales have been good this last few days and as have uh, signups for Patreon. So thank you very much for supporting the channel. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. All right. For long-term holders of Tesla, whether we get to $300 a share in 20. Uh, 23, whether we get to 410 all-time high in late January of 2024, or we get to 700 by the year end in 2024 is of no real importance. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> of course it is. We all love to see our portfolios grow. Yeah, we can talk all we want to about, oh, it's okay if the stock goes down because I'll just buy more. That isn't true for everybody. Now, there are some people who don't just are not just interested in their portfolio growing, they are actually going to be taking out some, you know, profits at 300 or taking out some profits at 410 or maybe in between. But, and some probably will buy more when it's really low and some will buy more as it gets higher and higher because guess what? We're going to 2000, 3000. I know I live in a weird optimistic reality, but right now this week, things are looking hugely positive. Let's take a little bit of a look uh, at a couple of things here. Elon Musk has just unveiled absolute proof to Wall Street that he is the GOAT, the greatest of all time, when it comes to AI tech. If they didn't know it Friday, they know it now. The ramifications for X and for Tesla are massive and growing. I reported on that last night in detail. If you didn't see that video, you should go back and take a look. So first, as noted last night, Elon has said that Grok will be available on your car. You'll be able to have a conversation, so to speak, with your car. Number two, as John Gibbs said on his channel today, Tesla can monetize, monetize its massive installed base of onboard computers to create reference, I mean, I'm sorry, inference opportunities. And that's a long, long story. To, I'm not going to go into it now. You can listen to John Gibbs's um, a video from this morning if you want to get all the details on that. But John thinks there's even a chance that individual auto owners could get paid to provide their computer on their car as a, a part of a huge, massive network of computers that would be providing this kind of inference work. Number three, changing the narrative of Tesla, the car company, to Tesla, the AI company, has just been upped a few notches. Number four, the fact that Croc broke, <laughs> the fact that Groke has a sense of humor and understands sarcasm is a very big deal in the world of cracking human-like intelligence. Again, I'm not going to get into detail on that right now. If you don't understand that, maybe look it up. Uh, you probably do understand that it's one thing to be able to recite things. It's another thing to be able to talk in robotic voice. But when you're talking about the next level of intelligence, humor, sarcasm are part of that deal. All right, number five. 
Elon says that Croak is better than the other systems already on some metrics. And this is his quote, what will blow people away is how fast Croak improves versus the other options. Well, one big improvement I've already mentioned is of course it's real time, which none of the others are real time, but it's real time in terms of the Twitter, no, I'm sorry, the exosphere, <laughs> not in terms of the general um, uh, internet yet, Maybe it will be in the future. I'm expecting it will. And then number six, Groke will undoubtedly also be used on Optimus, creating the ability to have a useful and realistic conversation with a useful um, uh, humanoid robot. Uh, you don't have to talk. I'm so excited. Anyway, <laughs> so believe it or not, it's big enough. Groke is a big enough deal that there is already a hit piece, R2, out on Groke people that are worried that the content will be skewed. Yeah, or unskewed, which will make it skewed for some. Anyway, and then they're suggesting that Grok might have to be banned because it'll, you know, be skewed in the way that some folks don't like. This uh, is coming from the CEO at Cardano, Charles Hoskinson. I don't know anything about him. All I can tell you is um, if he's worried, and he's making his, his concerns are based on the article that he put out today. Um, I'm glad he's concerned <laughs> because I'm not. Anyway, all right. So this huge news could infect Tesla stock tomorrow. I think it's going to be hard to figure out if it is or isn't because I'm already expecting Tesla stock to be up all week. Maybe you know it's you know ups and downs, but it's kind of generally up through the end of the year into January. And who knows? I mean, I, I, you know, yes, of course, there will always be crazy things that will happen that will bring it down, you know, a 20 percent drop or a 10 percent drop. Yes, those things are going to continue to happen. But the general trend now is going to be up. So it'll be kind of hard to tell if Gork, I'm sorry, I just did that again because I wrote it down wrong, whether Grok is actually specifically impacting it tomorrow. What I'm really looking forward to tomorrow is see what the MSM, what the mainstream media has to say tomorrow, like on CNBC, et cetera. All right. So what about the good news on the financial front? Um, sorry for the folks who are, uh, you know, always on this channel and hear me saying these things, but the new folks need to hear this. Number one, inflation is over. How long have I been saying that? I've been saying that for, I don't know. We have to go back and look. I would say seven or eight months, maybe longer. All right, number two, interest rates are going down and going down. They're already going down now and they're going down more. Now, will they go down in a straight line? No, they will not go down in a straight line. There's already some profit taking on Friday. And in the after hour, I mean, the pre-market, I just looked, there was a little profit taking uh, already taking place in the pre-market as well. Hey, bonds might be slightly down tomorrow with the interest rates slightly up tomorrow, maybe. All right. Number three, mortgage rates are already headed down. Headlines out there already talking about mortgage rates dropping a lot on Thursday and Friday. Um, number four, auto interest rates are headed down. I don't know who that could help. Then we got number five, employment seems to be balancing out. Uh, not as strong as, you know, we don't have, you know, the unemployment numbers are, are moving up towards 4%, which would still be a very good number. Um, but that means that there's you know, a little softening in the demand. Uh, that's good news as long as it doesn't get out of control. We certainly don't want the business climate to reverse and go into a negative situation. That would not be good for Tesla or for the stock market. Um, let's see. Then we've got number six. The Fed is done hiking. Yes, um, pretty much that is Wall Street believes that. I think pretty much across the board. I don't see even... You know, any like you'll usually have one or two people say, well, you know, they didn't say anyway. Right now, I think pretty much everybody agrees they're done hiking. Number seven, the business climate is softening, but there will be no recession. And how long have I been saying that? I think ever since I started the channel, that would be last December 1st, almost a year. We have almost 650 videos that we've done in that year. And uh, we're coming up close to that first year anniversary, kind of kind of fun to see that that's going to be coming up right away. Anyway, but I think I've been saying no recession, uh, I mean, sorry, uh, since the very beginning is even in the face of my, my hero, Elon, saying that there was going to be a bad recession. And Kathy, my other hero, 
sad. But anyway, I'm, oh yeah, and Larry Goldberg, my other hero. I mean, I got a lot of heroes out there that have been saying recession, and I've I've said no over and over again. Number eight, productivity is skyrocketing, which increases real wages. It increases profits. It reduces inflation and reduces interest rates. So productivity is like a panacea. It's like a, an ointment. It's like something that you take in order to cure your ills. So productivity going up by a lot in the last quarter is a very good thing. And I expect productivity, as does Kathy, as does, I think, Larry. And I don't know about Elon. <laughs> as I, we expect productivity to continue to be in a very strong position going forward into 2024. All right. Now, kind of, I left this, I put this into a category by itself. So that's all the economic news, but this is economic news too, even though it's geopolitical news. There is optimism that Israel is succeeding in Gaza faster than expected and with less mayhem than expected, either to their own troops or to anybody else. Talk is shifting in the headlines. I mean, very quickly to what are we going to do? What is Israel going to do? What is the world going to do in Gaza after the war is over? How will they set it up in Gaza when things are all done? When Israel says, okay, we've, you know, we've destroyed Hamas. They don't have weapons. They don't, there's no, there's no soldiers anymore. We're done with that. How do we now bring in people who have been saying for years that they would bring in billions of dollars to rebuild Gaza in a brand new way. But you have to have a stable government to do that. You have to have a people that wants to have a great life. And in the past, when these people have come in with these offers, they can't get past Hamas. Well, Hamas is gonna be gone. So can these people now come in and turn this into a stable, thriving place? There's nothing wrong with the folks. The folks, they got the brains, they got the capability. All they need is a stable government. We'll see what happens. So anyway, um, and then lots of headlines right now that the Ukraine is at a stalemate and that proposals are being put out there for some kind of peace discussions. And both sides might, might want to get something done before winter because it's brutal for the soldiers on both sides. It is brutal. And Z Zelensky even invited Trump to come over and maybe he thinks in terms of Trump as being the guy who could put that peace deal together. I don't know. There's just a lot of stuff now. It's unclear as to what it all means right now. And then Biden is headed to China to meet with Xi. Now, no matter what you, whether you like Biden or not, talking is good, usually. All right. Um, here's a few of the reports that are going to be coming out this week. We have on Monday, this is always great, but I think it won't be so bad this week, Fed, federal government a federal Fed Governor Cook speaks on Monday. Fed Reserve Senior Loan Survey on Monday. Okay, what is that? A lot of people don't know what this is. This is where the Federal Reserve talks to the big banks and the regional banks and asks them, "What are you tightening? Is your is your loan uh, methods tightening? Is it harder for businesses and commercial properties, etc., to get loans?" Are you easing up a little bit? What kind of interest rates are you charging? So anyway, that report will be out on Monday afternoon. I don't think it's on Market Mover uh, unless there's something significant in that report like, oh yeah, we it's so restrictive now, nobody can get a loan. But as we talked about before, the F, the uh, Federation of Independent Businessmen, uh, Business People, whatever it's called now, FD, anyway, I, I don't know why I have such a trouble right now with that federal, anyway, they said uh, a month ago or almost a month ago now that basically only 2% of small business people are concerned about being able to get a loan. So that is good. All right, number, then we got a Tuesday. We've got the U.S. trade deficit expected to come in at 60.3 billion, which would be up slightly. Um, don't know, I don't have a guess on that. Then we got Waller and Barr, a couple of more Fed governors, and chairs and vice chairs and whatever speaking on Tuesday. Then we've got consumer credit coming on Tuesday afternoon late. Um, so that is expected to actually go up a lot. Last month it was down 15.6 and now it's expecting to be up 9 billion. So that is kind of an odd one. That'll be interesting to see what happens. We won't be able to re really report on that until Tuesday afternoon. 
Then you've got Wednesday, you got Governor Cook speaking, Fed Governor Cook, you've got Powell speaking, <laughs> then you've got wholesale inventories, those are expected to be about flat from last month, and then a couple more Fed chairs speaking in the afternoon, uh, that would be Barr again and Jefferson. Thursday, you've got initial jobless claims as usual, That's they're expecting that to be right in the same range, they're saying 221 compared to 217 last week, and then Chairman Powell is speaking again that afternoon. Then on Friday, you got Veterans Day. Um, and then um, my understanding, there's also a report on that day, but it I won't talk about it now because it might be on Monday. There's two conflicting reports about the Consumer Confidence Index, whether that's Friday or Monday. Anyway, did I miss some news somewhere? Come on, now, was there bad news? Did I, I mean, I don't see any bad news. So I think the markets will be tending up next week. Um, unless something really crazy happens. Um, so, but I have to put this thing on pause for a second. About that, I dropped my phone. Okay, we've got the pre-market. The Dow is up 13 points at 0.04% up. We got the S&P futures unchanged. And we got the NASDAQ down just a tiny bit, down $5.50 at, fifth, at uh, that's 0.04% at 15,173. Okay, then we've got Bitcoin up a little bit, right at 35,000, plus or minus a little bit. Then we have got the dollar. Um, yeah, it's moving down, of course, because we're interest rates are dropping. So that is always gonna move the dollar down. We've got gold down a little bit, which typically goes in the opposite direction, but um, it's now under 2,000 again. And then we've got oil up a half a buck uh, at 81, but 81 is fine. If it stays at 81, we're all good. And then bonds um, at this point are up three basis points on the 10 year. Um, and a little, again, the profit taking continues. The two month is up two basis points and the two year is also up almost three basis points. So basically uh, profit taking across the board at this point. Um, what do I expect for the week? I expect that after the profit taking in the bond sector, it will continue down. Um, it will be, uh, you know, we'll have some of this even uh, levels like 4.5, you know, it, it'll bounce off of 4.5 again as it goes down. But I think in the course of the week could break through and, and start heading towards 4.25. And then um, that of course will help because there's only good news everywhere. That'll help everything else. And we'll continue to see uh, the market moving upwards, although as always, you know, some people will get greedy. They'll, maybe the market moves up 3% next week and people say, hey, there's some good profits there and they'll take some profits. So do not forget tomorrow. If you haven't already hit notify, if you haven't hit subscribe, I don't understand why not. Hit like because it helps the, all those things help the algorithm. And then um, tomorrow, of course, just a, one last reminder, the morning show at 7.10, roughly, where we talk about what's happening in the morning, the news overnight, et cetera. And then Brian White around the lunch hour sometime in California, California time. And then in the afternoon at around 5.10, after the bond futures come out, the, the, the pre-market comes out, um, we'll have Larry on. And Larry uh, will be my co-host now on Monday nights. And then in the meantime, um, it is always time, a perfect day right now. This is the perfect day. You know, it's getting close to Christmas. It's a perfect day. Buy yourself some Cybertruck uh, um, uh, bottle openers and join Patreon. Um, maybe give me an early Christmas gift, you know, join Patreon. There you go. Uh, I've got my Christmas colors on today anyway, and no pocket. So I couldn't put my Star of David on the shirt. I, I, I tried and I couldn't. So, but when I have a pocket, it will be there. I'm promising. All right. I think that's all I got for you right now. Looking forward to talking to you all day tomorrow. And if you get on Patreon, you could even get breaking news all day long. It has been great talking to you.